let's continue our discussion of C++ functions and also we, we touched on uh, indentation style, how to format your curly braces and this is actually what we've been using, it's called one true brace style, one DBS or one DBS, right? Uh, so I use for function style here and also the requirement to be true style, to be the actual style is to have a single statement blocks, also to have the curly braces. Again, C++ does not require you to have this, but why, sh why this is a good idea in general? Because if you do this, you will avoid some nasty bugs. Because let's look at this famous example of bug, right? Look at this, this is a, from 2014 in Apple code, right? Uh, this is, I think, Objective-C or C, right? For a security certificate, right? On here's the here's the problem, right? Well, do you see the issue here, right? Yeah, it always executes. It, this always runs, right? It's actually it should be here, right? It's an indentation error basically, right? Uh, first of all, of course, I'm, I'm I'm surprised this is not caught. So apparently there is no code review. Why? Why I'm surprised because not because of the indentation. It's possible to miss indentation errors. It's easy because of human eyes, but that go to fail, go to fail, if you see two identical statements, right? <laughs> first of all, you might be asking, first of all, what the heck is do go to doing in a C language uh, type of uh, code? You might be surprised to learn that C and C++ actually support go to, right? <laughs> uh, which is considered actually a very, very bad thing to do in general. But sometimes, for low level stuff, actually it's used. Famously, Linus used it in, in his uh, Linux kernel. There's some, once you get really good, you, you can see where actually using this label, right? There's a label fail, fail label, right? It's, it's, it's user defined, right? Programmer defined to use it, right? It makes your code a little bit easier to write. However, in this particular case, uh, it just led to some disa disastrous, uh, uh, you know, consequences because here what's happened is this Basically, this code, whatever else was here, right, never, never run, right? It's finalization. So this means that all the uh, all the signature verification will never fail. So meaning all signatures are valid, which obviously is a huge security bug, right? <laughs> so if you validate signature, right, and it's, oh, it's always good, it's always good, right? <laughs> so uh, this is finalization, right, this, uh, you know, doesn't work, right? So. Uh, pretty, pretty, pretty nasty bug, basically, right? So, and it all it would have been caught if you use this indentation style, right? You get curly braces here, right? It would be, it would be, it, it, it would have been caught, right? And for I'm still, I'm still trying to figure out why the heck. But, but I think this is just a fat finger mistake, right? Maybe you know, call it or maybe double somehow it made double gate line or something, right? But very dangerous bug. Right. So again, uh, seeming seemingly simple things like indentation, right, uh, lead to you know can lead to hard catch bugs if you if you're not consistent in your in your formatting. So uh, the book touches another thing is for those who are using Python mostly that another thing you don't do this in, in C plus plus right. If you're returning these two values, it's technically valid. But it's not a good idea because only the last value is going to be returned, right? The 23 or only z plus b, right? These in the beginning, only the second, the, only the last return will be returned, basically, which is you know uh, makes sense, right? As far as c plus plus makes sense, but uh, <laughs> but uh, you know don't do this, right? So of course, question might be what do you do when you need to return multiple values? You probably return a pointer to some structure or something like that. We'll talk about structures in a couple lectures, right? Uh, of course, what's happening here? You have a switch, right? So what's happening is basically, uh, well, you don't have breaks here, right? Which is okay, but what's happening here, of course, this is okay. Switch score divided by 10, right? So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 will return F, right? It's going to be fall through, right? Okay? Um, only question is now, uh, there's no default value. I would really like to see the default value here as well, because maybe you have an invalid score or something, right? But uh, yeah, so you can see it, then you can use this in, so in case of, instead of break, right, your turn, right? That's that works too, right? Implicitly, right? So multiple returns. Um, again, 
Rolling pair of dice, uh, Fibonacci number, do you want a pair of dice? Uh, well, okay, let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, we, want, we want to make a function to roll a pair of dice. Let's write a function for that. Let's do that. Where's my code space? Where's my code space? No. Uh, no, of course, no, I lost it. And. Uh, not here, not here, there's the upload, still validating the upload, no check complete, no issue found, that's good, oh there we go, okay, uh, let's write a function, uh, uh, let's declare a function uh, that rolls a pair of dice and returns the values. Both values, both values. Let's see what the signature will look like, I wonder. Yes, uh, that's the thing, void, right. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, this is already goes into, uh, uh, into the thing is, if you need to return more than one value, right? We need to go well, one thing, one way of doing it is to pass a reference. It's not pointer, it's a reference, right? So roll dice, right? Roll two dice. I don't really like this, uh, of course, uh, uh, this uh, function to work because it's too, it's too limited actually, right? But okay, right? A single dice would be no problem, we could return something here, right? So let's implement this. Now let's implement this. Let's implement this. Uh, function uh, this uh, roll two dice function so it's void right on so we have rand right and again all the remember rand function rand max right rand max is like 32,000 I believe right so what we do is we have distribution but you know from z with any number divide by well uh, reminder six now the thing is uh, is this completely well is it guaranteed to have complete random distribution good question actually right well why am i saying there might be a slight bias why who can think of a possibility of a slight uh, problem with this right well a tiny problem but maybe not crit not critical but could be a bias for those who think statistics that's the problem Well, the question is, I'm not 100% sure is there exactly, is, you know, the random max divided evenly by 6, right? So it's possible that the last few numbers, right, the zero, uh, 1 and 2 and 3 are slightly, tiny bit more likely to be than 4, 5, 6 possibility. Just, just possibility, right? I'm just saying this, right? Uh, uh, it's possibility. It's not. It's not a, maybe it actually works completely fine. Of course, the, assuming random max is huge, right? This bias will be really tiny, right? However, if I knew this function, I would probably be more likely to bet on uh, one, two, three, right? Let's do. Let's 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 do some statistics on this, right? Right? Let's do some. Let's see actually if I'm right or not, right? So. So what's happening here, right? Reference. So what does it mean, right? So we, um, I'm actually going to modify this function, right? So because, right, no return, no return needed, right, right? Reference, right? So, so let's roll these dice. Again, you guys follow how this works, right? Reminder six, right? We guaranteed zero, one, two, three, four, five, right? Plus one, that's why we need one to six, right? Okay, now, again, first, of course, it, it, well, I don't like this function because it's kind of like a wonky. It's, I would have preferred just a single dice roll and then maybe do something with that, right? Instead of doing two dice. Again, personally, in general, note, 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 I would have started with single dice right in general yeah but yeah so uh, let's see how this works okay we want statistics but we don't know any anything about the race yet right let's do some statistics 
And maybe I will comment this, all of this out, right? We stop about this testing. All right, let's do testing. So now our code is completely empty, right? And let's do some testing of let's test roll to dice. In first, in second, all right? And let's take a look if this works, actually, right? On print. All right, okay, let's see if this works, right? Uh, question is, do I need to do anything here? Well, should I put zero? Uh, not necessarily in this case because I'm going to be passing it, but right, since I'm not doing anything with it, right? Uh, but let's take a look, right? So if you see zero, something didn't work, right? Because we should have at least one to six, right? All right, let's roll it. Or informator. Okay. I'm still trying to get some errors. I don't know why is my syntax wise it's easy to write the syntax synthetically correct code, but semantically it might be still be complete garbage. Alright, it works. Let's do it again. Well, uh, not that's not fun, right? I'm getting the same same numbers again, right? So <laughs> I probably need to see it on based on time or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. And not otherwise. So let's see this, right? So uh, let's see this first, right? So um, first, let's see it. Mm. Let's see based based on time. Yeah. Uh, now this is where sit. Yeah. Time zero, right? So of course current time, right? Or Timer is not, oh, uh, if timer is not null, and I put null timer, uh, ah, but, uh, okay, ah, okay, if it's not, okay, yeah, so I'm returning time, which is fine, so this function, the signature of time, right, We're talking to, so it does two things, actually, right, I am getting time, in time t, right, it's, it's random takes, actually, right, sign, right, Time, what is time t, by the way? Time t is generally uh, unsigned integer, actually, usually, right? I believe you go to definition, right? So, zero here, we don't need a time. You don't need to save it in another value, right? You just give it its run. Okay, let's do it again. Okay, I'm still get Oh, yeah, finally. Okay, now I can... Now I'm rolling dice. Okay. So let's test our hip my hypothesis. Well, first of all, uh, print uh, what's int max, uh, random max, right? Random max, let's print random max. Put in random max. And what is the reminder divided? by six. All right, one more time. Um, okay, so divided by six, reminder is one. Okay, but we start from zero. So does that mean actually that there is more likely uh, that one meaning uh, the first two values are going to be more likely or just one value. Okay, let's, it's, of course, it's, since it's two billion, right? It's two billion that it's extremely likely to have any much of bias. So there might be a tiny bias. Really, really tiny. I mean, <laughs> you know, not probably going to make any difference. But however, of course, if I want to roll a random function, right, maybe try to break some other random max inclusive, right? Zero random max inclusive. Right, so actually that would make it sense then if they start zero, there might not be a bias whatsoever. But okay, let's do math, let's do some calculations, how many rolls? Let's do a rolls. Let's do, let's, let's do some rolls um, uh, based on RC. Okay, I'll put RC. Again, usually you want to do this, right? Make your functions, right? So this is usually you want the signature, your main signature should have this argument count on 
this array of C type arrays, right? If you pass the arguments, well, I want to do some roles. Uh, let's do roles. So num roles. Let's do like maybe ten, right? And then if if argument right, right. And now we'll roll. Right, but I don't want to do this. I want to calculate, right? So I let's keep track of some of the roles, right? In person. All right, All right. Roll two dice first, second, right? So we keep reusing. So we keep so we keep reusing the same variables, right? And I don't want this, this is be too much, right? After after rolls print info. Number rolls, first some, second one, and I want also I also now averages. Average color. But the average of course is first first average double, right? Uh, first some right. Why am I okay, why am I doing double here? Uh, because of course I want uh, its possibility that is most likely average is going to be of course uh, average is going to be uh, uh, average is going to be um, how should I say uh, it's going to be a floating you know you know it's not going to be you don't the exact number right it's going to be a floating number okay so uh, what should be the average well for each roll. <laughs> What should be the average? What do we expect? Well, for each roll. We have two rolls. They're completely independent, right? Nothing to beat. Three, four, five. Yeah, of course, right, yeah. So, the only question is how close would we get, right? So first, so let's, let's play around with this. I'm gonna compile it, okay. So let's do fun, let's 10 rolls. Uh, first, some um, second, I think that's kind of, that's suspicious. No, okay, now that's fine, yeah, right, okay, that's only 10 rolls, so how many rolls can you do, let's do 10,000, okay, that's better, how about 100,000, that's better, million, no problem, or CPU, whatever, like Google, Azure, or Microsoft, Azure is pretty good, let's do 10 million, or 100 million, let's do 100 million, Okay, not too bad, about two seconds or so, right? So 100 million rolls do double, right? So, we're getting pretty darn close, right? <laughs> so, again, this is statistics in action, a lot of large numbers, but looks like they're, well, average is good. We don't know, well, it would be nice to see the count of things, right? Is it really... Is one really more likely to be than the other ones? I don't think so, but uh, we could see this, right? So how would we do this? We need to have a counter here, right? We need an array, of course, would be better, or some dictionary or something like that, a map function, but, you know, some structure. Of course, we could, what we could do is have six different values, you know, uh, ones, zeros, ones, twos, threes, fours, five, six, right? That kind of smells like a real beginner code, right? Because, you know, I mean, it works here because you only have six, six dice values. But what happens you have 20-sided dice or 50-sided dice, right? <laughs> and then, then it stops working. Okay, but what did we learn from all this as far as functions, right? First of all, we learned that we can pass, right? Right, double X, double max, no, that's my max, no, this one here, right? This part here, reference, right? So this means we modify these numbers, right? We are going to be modifying these numbers. We'll talk more about uh, pointers and reference in general, but again, here, right, we're saying this, we are going to be modifying actually these, right? So, we pass in what we want to modify. So, that's one, so that's how we get around uh, the issue of not being able to pass more than one value, right? 
Uh, again, does it have to be void? No, we could pass something like error message or something. We could pass an integer like success or no, or we could just pass the first value out if you want, right? So again, yeah, so this is, uh, but I would like to see this part here would like to be, I would generally this, this row should really be its own function, right? Right, let's do that maybe, right? On this one I can do, so role, single role, let's do that. Let's, let's do single role of dice function. Int, right? And now, the question is now, I did not declare it up there, but will it work here? Yeah, so let's do that. Yeah, I'm gonna compare. So, first roll dice. This is nicer already, right? So why is nicer? Because because I have an abstraction, right? Rolling dice, single dice, that's a good unit of abstraction. It's a good piece of information for a function, right? Single function, rolling dice, returns a value, all good. Again, if I wanted to, right? It'd be nice to have, of course, these parameters, right? From how many, how many pieces, right? Is it how many values, right? Uh, start and stop, right? Uh, but for now, this I think is a good, good start, right? Do you like maybe any anything else about these functions? I don't know. I think this is okay, right? Okay, yeah. Yeah, we can survive, right? All right, all right. Let's see what else uh, uh, I'm going to commit. Uh, what else? Uh, JSON setting, settings JSON. I don't know what the heck did I do anything. What did I do here? iOS stream of file associations. Okay, why not? All right, all right. So add this and add it. Uh, dice row function. Right. Like note, note, note. I did not declare it up. Yeah. If I wanted to use this function, email. Yeah. Right. So of course here. Right? I did not declare. I would probably should probably declare it up, right? And again, these of course should also be separate header, probably, right? Okay, so commit. Stay always, always, always. Yeah, all right. Sync changes. Sure, why not? Hopefully, everything works still. All right, very good. Now, uh, the slides, what else do we need? Okay, so rolling by the Fibonacci, Polyndrome, Cable Company. No big deal. Low compilation execution, right? Main, of course, right? Prototypes before definition, right? Uh, and void functions, of course, uh, either after main. Void function don't have to really worry about, right? It's pretty self obvious. Uh, value, right? So, value parameter, right? So, so we just saw this in action, right? A copy, so value is basically a copy, right? A reference, right? This is a crucial difference, distinction, right? It's a parameter, and this is a location, the memory address, right? So then, right? So pass by value by pass by reference, right? So here I am, note, yeah, I am passing reference, right? So this means if I'm passing some variables, they will be modified, right? Of course. Uh, first, second, right? I know this only my, my main. Uh, I use it, uh, well, does this have to be first? I can rename it, by the way, right? First dice, second dice, right? Notice, if I, re if I, re bless you, right? So if I do this control D, control D, right? First dice, first dice, right? And second dice, right? This, second dice, right? Uh, this should not change anything, right? Because this is a local scope, even though, right? It does not have to match, right? The first dice, I call the first dice here, this identifier locally, it will have the same memory address as this, this called first, right? And second, right? Let's take a look if this still works, right? Because I changed names, right? But it shouldn't make any difference, right? They're just identifiers, right? Yeah, it works still. And I'll time it. How much time it takes to? Uh, let's time it. Okay, it took two seconds. It took two seconds, right? And still about 3.5, right? 
And again, notice even the flaw of large numbers, it's roughly not guaranteed to be exact. Okay. So you guys understand this idea of reference here, right? I'm actually technically sending a memory address here, actually, right? You're not getting the pointers not just yet. It's sort of like sort of like uh, getting the high level view first, right? Uh, but yeah, but we are modifying, so we are we are modifying the value of the first dice. Mm -hmm. So whatever we pass in will be modified, right? But this is important, right? Same, same, same as for first dice. Original value will be lost in second dice. That was passed in, right? So that's what you should be, yeah, if you see this at yeah, reference, right? So very good, good important point. And of course, also we'll be able to uh, also send in uh, uh, pointer values, of course, too. Right? Technically, it's value, but it's a memory address, right? The formal argument has a value parameter, right? It's copied, right? It's own copy data, right? Own, own memory space, right? Again, depends on your needs, right? Is a reference, right? You can manipulate this right memory address. So, if when we get to more complex data structures, we will be passing references to it, right? Because we'll probably want to modify this, right? You probably don't want to copy the whole, you have this big array, right? You don't want to modify the big array or big structure, this bunch of different uh, model, you know, bunch of different structures. You want to actually modify it, right? Okay, so reference value is a tree. You're changing. Returning more than one value, right? And then passing address of the same memory space and time. Exactly. I agree with book in this case, uh, right? Uh, that uh, it's kind of, it, it goes together. It goes with the territory, right? You're changing actual parameter. Again, returning. You can't return more than one value, so you pass in the multiple values. Again, but you might be saying, okay, I want, to check, I want to return six values, right? You probably want something more complex than just single structure, again. So think about, hmm, think about, Think about, think about how, uh, how well pointers that later, but um, later, later, but uh, well, what to do if we need to return hundred dice, ten thousand, right? Yeah, of course. You know, you're not gonna do this, right? First dice, second dice. That's kind of silly, right? Even for six dice, so they get kind of silly, right? You see what, how the need for data structures arise from this, right? So, allocated on a function date on stack, right? So, of course. So, what's happening also when we call this function, right? When you call a function, right? Function gets its own so called stack space, right? Uh, where, you know, for its local, local scope, for its local bookkeeping, so say what, you know, what kind of memory it's used, right? So, of course. There is also sort of like we call one function with another function and so on, right? Okay. Now I'll give you guys. We almost finished. Let's see here. Well, the reference memory allocation, right? The actual parameter. So very important point, right? So we can change the actual data we pass in, right? Yeah. Can I also use it in the value returning function by? Yeah. Okay, well, he says void. I wonder if it's actually, uh, I would probably say adding an error return or something also, is not maybe not so good, not so bad, right? So scope, right? Where ID is accessible, local identifier is where within this function block, global, everywhere. So C++ does not allow nested functions, function within function, right? You cannot do a function inside a function, right? It's not a pure functional language, well, it should not be, right? Uh, so, uh, of course, you can use other other functions. So, so global identifiers, right? Outside any function blocks, right? So, of course, you have to be again. So, I did this first dice, right? Again, if I if I stuck with first, right? It really didn't make any difference, right? Here, uh, the name, right? I using it in a, in the main function. Use sec first, right? It refers to the same thing as first uh, first dice here. But it could have also been first, right? Because it's in the scope, right? That's the ident identifier we are using, right? You still don't get to see the main the main scope here. So now, next the block, right? Whatever the block is, that's where we can use it. So global variables, right? This is for resolution, right? Uh, right. 
we can also yeah it's possible to use global variables afterwards usually that's rare but it happens right you might need to sometimes yeah yeah the same name right external happens sometimes uh right so global variables in general of course as you probably know right uh, is not recommended right in general in most programming global variables should be avoided as much as possible right in any language right so problems with debugging problems with one area you know you want to keep something comes in something comes out right you want function to be sort of like predictable right okay uh right so uh automatic variables are allocation because c plus plus worries about the memory allocation you have to you have to worry along with c plus plus automatic variables memory allocated at block entry they allocated at block exit right uh, static variables basically keeps running, right? Usually you use static uh, keyboard, right? Something like this, right? Uh, static, right? You can do this this global, the static global. Basically, I'll, I'll put here, right? Static. Right, this is identified on the global. Let's do a global. Uh, I'll do it here. Let's let's declare static global variable for holding big sum of, in, of static insert big sum so this is yeah in this file on its functions yeah so by the way i if i remember correctly the standard has been while since i read it you don't need this zero it's also it's going to be also zero automatically but okay this is more more explicit right uh, so this is before better right so again in general in general in general we try to avoid yeah okay right so of course i could do big sum here right i could use it here right i mean uh, I could modify this. Uh, what's going to happen here, right? So, uh, big sum. I mean, this should be right. Yeah, not not a good practice. Not a good practice here, but to see what is happening, right? Uh, yeah. All right. So, big sum is always so this is what you shouldn't really do, right? Again, it's like a teacher likes to do. Uh, uh, now. Now, now let's print big sum. Yeah, not I don't like it, right? But I'll show you what is done. That's afterwards I'll, I'll comment this out. And also, what's going to happen, of course, right? <laughs> uh, good question, actually, right? We are summing current million items, right? Oh no, it's going to be okay, right? Big sum is still still room, right? Six hundred million, so seven hundred million, no? Yeah. 700 million roughly right close enough to seven right so it's like this bit so it works right but hopefully you saw this this is not this is really really smells bad right so uh, unless unless you have some real you know you can't figure out your you know you need a solution first right later on this is this makes your program really hard to follow right so again sometimes you need it right some global state right so i will so generally, yeah. So I will comment easily hands out. So I'm commenting out. On, yeah, I'm commenting. Yeah. Yeah. So I will. Yeah. If you get the global variable. Global. Yeah. All right. All right. I think that's enough for today. Uh, um, but you have a quiz and you have two co new homework assignments. Maybe let's look at those briefly. Uh, so quiz. Let's see. If people should probably have. Bless you. Only one person still has done the quiz, right? No, that's homework. No, one person has submitted primes and one person has submitted the population already. Hopefully, yeah. So it's seven days still left, right? But. <laughs> Good flex, good flex, good flex. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, all right. No.
So, but about uh, nobody has done a quiz yet, or did I turn it off or something? Uh, no, we're just doing a quiz. Do you mean? No, I think we just haven't done it. You haven't done it. Well, you should do it, right? It should be easy, right? Let me see. Did I do anything really evil here? Value parameter, void function, yeah, reference parameter, declaration on predefined function. Yeah, easy, easy stuff, right? Should take you two minutes, right? Give me a couple more, right? So, uh, how about the homework? Uh, so, you have two functions. Is prime, right? Uh, this one probably, again, of course, you use copilot or something, should be really easy, but you should still pay attention what you're doing, right? There are a couple different ways of doing it, right? Um, you can do something really fancy. If, you, if you're really bored with science, of course, you can come up with maybe some improvement, right? Uh, something more efficient. There are plenty of ways of doing it. Uh, how about, but this one is a little bit tricky, right? So this one is slightly tricky because uh, uh, there are some cases where this might not work as expected, right? So this is usually, there are a couple edge cases where if you are trying to, you know, rush it, you might fail on this, on this, you know, not fail, but you'll get like eight or seven, not go 10 on this one, right? So, a little bit careful here, right? You have four parameters and you're turning only one. So look at these examples. Okay. Otherwise, you know, I'm going to be finished. Uh, we can stop.